Okay, one last sound check before we begin. Just about time now. Just to indicate, a couple of you might indicate uh, in local chats. Oh, good. Wonderful. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here at uh, Virtual Worlds and Best Practices in Education, or 216. My name is uh, Scott <laughs> Anstad, uh, and I am at the, oops, something just changed here. Oh, no. <laughs> um, excuse me just a moment. Looks like the slideshow has got to be re -rezzed. Um, let me re res this here. Okay, I'll try it again. All right, there we go. And um, I will just check to make sure that this is ready for us. Hmm. All right, here we go. Uh, let me start again. My name is Scott Anstead from Florida Gulf Coast University in the Department of Social Work. And it's a pleasure to be here at VWBPE in 216. Uh, today, I would like to present a, about a course and a study that we have undertook with regards to course design uh, over the last two years about a course that has been uh, designed to um, be used in Second Life itself. I'm having a little bit of trouble here, but hopefully this will work now. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I have a colleague here, Jasmine Lordenwich, who could not be here today. And also this is being um, transcribed by uh, Barita who uh, will be typing in local chats. Uh, I will explain to you a little bit about what we're going to cover today in this presentation. Uh, first of all, the purpose of the study is to demonstrate course design considerations to enhance cultural diversity and competency using the Second Life virtual setting. Uh, this was done in uh, two separate semesters over the period of 213 to 214 and 214 to 215. What I will do first of all is uh, share with you the abstract of the study. Uh, then I will give you a general outline of the course as it appeared for two years. Uh, then I will talk about course design considerations, and in particular, what we had learned over the first year, which we were able then to apply successfully in the second year. Uh, this incorporated the community cultural hub, which uh, I have developed here as a way to bring students easily into Second Life and to assure that they have a, um, a pleasant and uh, intense uh, educational experience. Last, um, excuse me here, whoever has their mic on and is typing, please turn that off, thank you. Uh, and then we will go over the data 
uh, to show here what has improved and uh, we did get statistical significance. Okay, the uh, study abstract. Uh, again, the purpose is to demonstrate the use of Second Life in a structured and self-directed platform for enhancing cultural competency, in this case, of social work students at the both the uh, bachelor's level and at the master's level. Uh, the method used is a mixed design. Uh, again, to your study comparing uh, a traditional approach that was kind of slapped on to Second Life versus a Second Life specific course design, which would enhance student engagement and also their motivation and interest in learning in this new platform. Uh, student surveys were used as the instruments and found significant improvement in student involvement and appreciation of the cultures that they visited in Second Life uh, and a way of using cultural resources within Second Life as they go into their social work profession with uh, a multitude of, uh, of various clients from different backgrounds. Uh, here is the course outline as it occurred over both years. Uh, first of all, the learning objective is the expansion of cultural competency by expanding the range of experience that the students had interfacing with different communities and different cultures. Uh, with regards to the course design considerations on the micro level, students had to navigate through Second Life, otherwise they wouldn't be able to visit a lot of these communities. And also they needed to be able to identify to some extent with their avatar. On the macro level, uh, they were encouraged to recognize and explore a range of communities in Second Life, in, and including their resources, traditions, practices, and key people known as key informers uh, from those particular cultural community traditions. Next slide. Oops. Okay. Uh, now the assignments for both years included uh, the uh, practice in navigating and acclimating to Second Life of the students, uh, finding and exploring some communities, cultural communities and spiritually based communities in Second Life, and finding and interviewing uh, key informants from these cultures and learning from them about the purpose and the practices in those communities. Uh, later on, we had uh, gatherings of the students here in focus groups to share our experiences. Uh, the course theory, course design theory, encompasses a number of key uh, terms here, theoretical frameworks. One of them is called self-directed learning. And uh, this has been found in literature to be extremely effective with students. If they're given enough structure, then they need to be able to manipulate some of their actions and behaviors so that they end up learning in their own unique way. Uh, for example, here uh, with Second Life, there are a number of different communities that they can explore, uh, but which exact ones they wish to explore, that uh, was up to them. Also, uh, exactly what services, what traditions, what practices, what gatherings 
they wanted to visit, that again was up to them. The next theoretical framework is constructivist theory. Constructivist theory means that the events and the experiences around the student have to take place in such a way that they can make sense out of them and again make sense out of them in their own way. Uh, everybody has their own way of perceiving based upon their own background, based upon their own uh, uh, cultural experiences. So they must make sense. They must have the opportunity so that whatever the experience is, is not so cut and dry that uh, they are able to, uh, to put it together for themselves in the learning experience. Uh, the next uh, theoretical framework is to self-regulate and self-pace. This is really important because some students uh, have experience in gaming and in the virtual platform, others did not. And we did not want to necessarily go as a whole bunch of people because we might leave some behind. Therefore, the directions had to be made very clear to them, but then they had to follow up at their own pace. Uh, the next theoretical framework is that of mega cognitive and executive processes. Uh, it was really essential that we build into the course planning, organizing, taking notes, evaluating their behavior, the interface between themselves and uh, the people that they visited at the communities, and to give them an opportunity to journal and to write about this experience, to reflect upon that experience. This is very much akin to what we do in everyday life and therefore is good practice for it. Uh, other considerations was to uh, give the opportunity for interactive discourse with uh, resources that were genuine and had been vetted. Uh, this leads to uh, the student feeling a sense of immersion and being able to uh, be a part of what was going on and see how it fits for them. As you know, Second Life is multi-sensory and multi-dimensional, and that's what makes it such a rich environment. Now, uh, in the first year, we were a little naive. Uh, we kind of guessed as to how we wanted to do things. When it came to the Second Life navigation aspect of the and also training of the course, uh, we could have done better, and that's what, uh, that's what I'm getting at. We re referred the students to a video made by Linden Labs, which was on the internet. I am, uh, by the way, uh, let's hold the questions until after I'm done here, uh, and I will get to the, uh, to the ages and so forth of the students. Uh, also, uh, we offer to the students one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring and, uh, and guidance at their request, though. In other words, not necessarily built into the course. Uh, the second area, finding and exploring communities, uh, we taught them how to use the Second Life search engine, and we also gave them a list of a couple landmarks presuming that they could find their way. With regards to finding key informants, we taught them how to look at the community profile of, of a particular landmark and uh, how they could find the owner. We also gave them a few names by word of mouth. Focus groups were rather open-ended uh, and were not as structured as they could have been. Now we uh, look here at the second year, and this is very important, and I hope that you will, if you get nothing else out of this presentation, you would get how we learned from our first year and applied it to the second year. Uh, with regards to Second Life Navigation, uh, I made a video 
rather detailed video of about 30, 35 minutes, made sure that all the students viewed it. We viewed it together and we had a discussion about uh, how to navigate in Second Life step by step from the video. Also, we did uh, three self-guided tours in which we visited uh, some builds on Second Life, which were self-guided courses in the very basics of how to um, navigate in Second Life, use voice and so forth, uh, so that all of the students had all of this experience here and could explore and experiment with how to navigate. Uh, next, uh, we did have a one-on-one one -one, um, uh, mentoring, and we had a little army of mentors that were available at all times of the week for at least the, the first several weeks. Uh, I also made a video on uh, simply changing clothes from the, um, from the avatar library. Uh, this allowed the students to be able to develop their avatar at least in part, uh, in their own way and add some of their own identity to, uh, to that avatar. And then lastly, to kind of put it all together, uh, my uh, colleague Jasmine um, had, uh, had run a simple art creation workshop. And I will show you a little sampling of what they developed there. This used a lot of very basic navigation and building skills. Uh, which uh, allowed them then to try out and to create something for themselves on Second Life. With regards to the next point of create fixed finding and exploring communities, uh, I developed the Community Cultural Hub, which I will go into a few more moments. But uh, what it is, is, is a, it's a central teleportation um, center in which students come in, can easily get information on a variety of communities, can click on a poster that is on the wall and get a note card about that poster and also a landmark which they can use immediately, making it a lot easier for them to get around and also to use communities which were vetted by myself. Uh, the next point of finding key informants uh, I spent the whole summer finding people that I could uh, work with in a variety of communities. We had lengthy discussions and conversations. I told them about the, uh, the course and uh, got them on board so that uh, when somebody contacted them, they knew what uh, that person was about. Uh, also, I was able to conscript a number of them to come to the Community Cultural Hub to do presentations during the course. Uh, we had about 10 presentations of key informants from a variety of communities so that all the students had to do was show up at the Community Cultural Hub and they would get a taste and a description of these uh, spiritual and cultural communities. Obviously, the focus groups were uh, more organized, more developed, uh, there were very specific questions, and so we got a lot more information, and I thought they were very much more useful for the students. So you can see here we did a lot more the second year based upon our experience in the first. Uh, now this is an example of some of the artwork that was made by the students in the basic art uh, workshop. Uh, they were very proud to have made something. This was very simple, but it did have a moving script, so they were quite proud of their accomplishments. Next slide. Uh, we also uh, took the initiative on the second floor of the Community Cultural Hub to post each one of the assignments in the course and each one of them has a poster and when you click on that poster then up pops the assignment in detail including what was expected and if there were additional resources including the key informants 
So this was another way, aside from going into the syllabus, <laughs> um, in which they could actually practice their skills by keeping track of the assignments in, in the course. Okay. Now about the Community Cultural Hub. It is in the Whole Brain Health Sim, and it is designed as the central teleportation and information hub on a sample of about 120 communities. Uh, these posters, which are on the wall of the hub, the hub looks a little like a library, are organized by educational sims, spiritual and religious sims, historical sims and role play, social services, art sims, and including performing arts, and other categories. Uh, when the person comes in, they will see the walls with posters. All they need to do is click on a poster, and uh, they will get their note card. Inside the note card is a landmark, and also a uh, mention of the key informant. Uh, each one of these communities has been vetted by myself and colleagues. Uh, we went to them. We sampled them. We interacted with the uh, many of the uh, members of those communities, so we knew they were safe and educational. Uh, also, the Community Cultural Hub is a meeting spot for groups and uh, key informant presentations, as I meant, mentioned. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I interviewed each one of those key informants uh, and uh, kind of coached them on how to incorporate some of the literature on the web and in other sources about their particular community so they could add those into their presentations. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you some pictures of the Community Cultural Hub in just a moment. Okay, now here is the instrument that we used, and I won't go into this in a lot of detail. But uh, I wanted to just go over the 11 questions that we had here. Uh, first, was this experience a good learning experience for you regarding religion, spirituality, and culture? Two, uh, is Second Life, uh, are you able to access it easily and maneuver through it? Three, um, was I able to build and create to some extent my avatar? Four, uh, Second Life provides an opportunity to cover one of the core competencies in social work uh, with regards to the inclusion of diversity uh, while assessing clients. And five, uh, I would consider taking an online course in Second Life. Now I made that red because that is the only one that was rated low between the two years. <laughs> okay, uh, continuing on with the survey. Uh, item number six, uh, we found the interactive visual features in Second Life useful for learning. Number seven, interviewing key informants in Second Life helped you to learn about the culture and traditions of various people. Eight, participating in the practices, services, rituals, and so forth uh, in these communities on Second Life was helpful in learning about um, how I can then take that into the social work assessment process with clients. Nine, Second Life provides an opportunity to cover, again, a core competency in social work regarding understanding human behavior within the total context of the social environment. And then last, with regards to the survey, uh, Second Life provides the opportunity to cover the core competency practice skill regarding uh, distinguishing, appraising, 
and integrating multiple sources of knowledge in a multidimensional way into your practice interventions. 11, Second Life provides the opportunity to cover the core competency regarding gaining sufficient self-awareness to reduce personal bias and values and working with diverse populations. This is really critical in social work to be able to understand where you might have some subtle biases as you encounter people from various backgrounds. Okay, now to go into the study a little bit. In uh, 2013, we had a course of 30 students. In 2014, it was 36. The average age was in the middle 20s and a range of between 19 and 47. The sample populations were equated statistically and they were all in the same course uh, over the course of the two years and also had the same instructor who was me. Uh, all items in the survey uh, as we compared 2013 with the uh, course in 2014, all items were found to be significantly different uh, for the positive in 2014. And I'll go into that in some detail. Now I know that this looks a little complicated, but what I want to show you, this is the statistical analysis done in a graph. If you look at the green, uh, both the light and the dark green, those are high ratings for each one of the items in the survey. And you can see here that there weren't a lot of those in 2013, and there was quite a bit of those in 2014. And again, in comparing 2013 and 2014, all the items were uh, significantly different with the items um, being to the positive. That's what this would say here for Levine's test and for the t-test, all of them were for the positive um, in 2014. Okay, now we also uh, collected qualitative results. Uh, these were derived from an assignment in which students would uh, uh, enter their impressions in journals. And the journals were then compiled into a journal paper, which was turned in uh, with regards to what they learned uh, from their Second Life experience. These journals were then uh, meta-analyzed by, uh, by a number of qualified jurists using the Delphi method. And these jurists included uh, faculty, as well as students uh, who did the contextual meta-analysis. Okay. Now here, oops, here we go again. All right, hopefully we're on now. Um, oops. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the previous here. Uh, for 2013, these are the impressions that were gleaned as summaries um, from which correspond to the survey. First of all, um, there were some initial impressions of interest with regards to Second Life. Second, but it was very difficult and awkward to access and to use. It caused a lot of frustration. Third, there were no comments with, re, with whatever with regards to their avatars. Fourth, there were no comments on diversity issues. Fifth, there was a resounding no as to going, uh, taking a course on Second Life. Sixth, uh, there was beautiful artwork. Seven, no comments on key informant information. Eight, no comments on the usefulness of uh, information for client assessments. Nine, 
so there was some initial interest in the community in uh, with regards to the structure and the architecture. 10, no comments on integrating sources of knowledge for client assessments. And 11, discover, they did discover in passing some new practices on a spiritual level. Um, oh boy, okay, here we go. Uh, here's an example quote, and uh, you can read it for yourself if you'd like to, but um, I'll just kind of summarize by saying here that um, uh, I highlighted the words, I am a bit discouraged from uh, one of the students. And that basically uh, summarized a lot of their comments. Now let's go to 2014. Okay, again, let's take a look at the survey, qualitative uh, survey summaries. For number one, there was an interest and desire to attend more services and learn more about spiritual and cultural practices. Two, there was easy access. The students were able to acclimate to Second Life very easily. Third, easy to make simple clothes changes, and that allowed for personal preference, so there was identification with the avatar. Fourth, an interest in understanding practices of several cultural groups represented, and these were named. Five, there was an openness to including Second Life in traditional coursework. Six, beautiful art expressions of religious and cultural practices. Many of them went back several times for these uh, cultural practices and rituals. Uh, seven, interest in sources of values and traditions as expressed by the key informant interviews. Eight, a heightened sense to becoming culturally competent when understanding clients professionally. Nine, awareness of the range of family and community values in how members relate to each other in communities and as helpers. 10, understanding the purpose of detailed and cultural assessment and investigating how culture affects how we perceive others in and out of our traditions. That was really a key one for me in helping to reduce personal bias when working with clients. And 11, notice both personal biases and acceptance of other persons who may become clients. Recognize the importance of this awareness. Uh, this was very heartening to me here, but you could see that the course design is what made these differences. Here's an example quote, and again, you can read this if you'd like, but uh, here is a summary. I was surprised to see just how many places there are for people to go just by looking at the Whole Brain Health Community Cultural Hub walls. And it goes on to say, I've become so impressed with Second Life. There were quite a few testimonials of that kind. Uh, this is uh, the Community Cultural Hub from the outside. Looks a little like a library. It's in the center of the Whole Brain Health uh, Sim. And this is the inside of the Community Cultural Hub. Uh, these are two walls that you're looking at here. And uh, on the top of the wall is the name of the category. And then the various posters, which were um, the pictures were given to me by the communities. Uh, so they're easy to recognize. And uh, when you click on one of the posters, uh, you get a note card. The note card has a description of the community and a landmark, making it very easy for the students to go back and forth. Uh, and they really enjoyed being able to do that. Next one, uh, with regards to the conclusions here, we'll have a little bit of time for uh, questions and answers, by the way. Uh, but let's take a look at the conclusions that we can draw here. 
Uh, in contrast to year one, year number two uh, had the students describe themselves as really immersing themselves in the Second Life experience. The reasons for that is seen from the data. There was reduction in frustration. Uh, there was more attention paid to mentoring and uh, guiding the students to navigate through Second Life. And there was also the Community Cultural Hub instrument, which was used to help them get to places that were trusted and to people that were vetted uh, so that they could concentrate on the cultural experience. Uh, two, um, as I mentioned, the initial frustration was greatly reduced. Um, and uh, we did this through putting a good deal of effort into basic training here, uh, self-regulated and self-selected courses on Second Life uh, for allowing this person to learn how to navigate through Second Life. And lastly, the Community Cultural Hub, including the generosity of the informants to actually come to the hub and do detailed presentations of their communities for the students. Uh, this was really important for interaction really important to open the eyes of the students and was an incentive for their visiting these communities. Let's go on here. Um, with regards to course design with, in, in the use of Second Life, uh, both self-directed learning and constructivist perspective or constructivist theory in virtual platforms must be well designed with a good deal of uh, con connecting, a good deal of mentoring to be most effective. What we hope would happen and I think what did happen in the second year was to give enough structure and enough practice to these students so that then they could go on and design parts of the course themselves, for themselves, and perceive it, construct what they were experiencing in their own personalized way. This was meaningful for them. It allowed them to be semi-autonomous, uh, yet within the constraints here of the assignments, so that each assignment was basically formulated and constructed in part by the students. Uh, I think that this gave them buy-in into this uh, new format here of using Second Life in a virtual platform. I believe this helps traverse the bridge between traditional real-life environments and those with uh, virtual affordances in construction of also a personal avatar, who went into a personalized uh, curriculum of their own. They were able, however, as we all know from Second Life, to uh, feel the contextual meaning of their surroundings as they were interacting with people in, who were in real life, but uh, whose avatars were in Second Life and who were bringing the traditions, culture into the Sims so that they could experience it, the next best thing to actually being there. And they could do this in a relatively short period of time, maybe two or three visitations in an evening. So there again, we could see the, the melding of real life and second life in an educational framework. Now, uh, I would like to say that uh, if you'd like a copy of this PowerPoint, simply uh, IM me, and I'd be glad to give me your email, and I'd be glad to send it to you. Uh, and I certainly have no problem at all with you using parts of, uh, of this course or parts of the PowerPoint. 
Uh, on this slide here, uh, you will see the URLs uh, for the uh, video that I made to introduce the students to Second Life and also the Community Cultural Hub. Also to link uh, the very famous now uh, older adult Fran, uh, who is part of um, one of the famous Sims here, uh, devoted to Parkinson's, and uh, also the uh, another URL, which I think you'll find fascinating, a student explored the sim of Israel Island and was able to get in touch with her heritage, again, after many years of uh, feeling uh, kind of separate from it. So um, let me um, also, I realized that I did not give you my uh, email. So uh, let me do that. Let me type that in local chat here. And um, that uh, can be either sanstad at fgcu.edu or my personal one is <laughs> rubadu at gmail.com. We're hoping to publish this paper in 2016, but you know, if you'd like to do work with me on this and uh, we design other courses, I would be very, very happy to work with you as, as a colleague and uh, also be willing to um, um, send you the references that uh, we used here to inform ourselves of the study. Um, I think that's about it. Um, let me just double check. I think we're done now. Uh, so let me ask you, we do have about uh, eight minutes or so. Um, let me just ask here if the email was typed. Please do type that email. Um, let me get it for you here. Or here we are. Um, now, how about questions? I would, uh, you know, I'll look for them in uh, nearby chat here. What are your suggestions for future research? Well, one thing I think that we need to replicate. Uh, this uh, course here uh, using other instructors at other universities. Uh, and we have a number of additional assignments that I could share with you, uh, which might actually improve the course additionally. So I would love to do that with, uh, with others. And uh, of course, eventually down the line, as we do enough of those, then we can validate the instrument. <laughs> Uh, the instrument uh, was based upon another study that was done, but uh, we did uh, also add the, uh, the social work competencies in there uh, because we do come from a social work background. Uh, okay, uh, I'm told now that uh, my email uh, did not come through again. Let me type that again. In nearby chat, yes. Uh, there's one and the other one. If you don't see it by some chance, um, uh, I can get back with you later on. I just typed it though. It's in uh, nearby chat. It's uh, rrubidu at gmail.com or sanstad at fgcu.edu. Uh, oh, good. Okay, well, there we go. It's on <laughs> as far as the, uh, the, the school one. Uh, okay, the other question, which disciplines are best suited to using Second Life as you did in your study? 
I would, well, from, you know, I come from a social work background, but I could see it being used in anthropology. I know there's a good deal of literature um, on uh, ethnography. Uh, I could see it in counseling. Um, uh, and uh, of course, there are considerations there with regards to privacy and security, which need to be looked at, but I could certainly see at one point that being used. Uh, Self-help groups and support groups. Uh, okay. Oh, good. Okay. And any other questions here? Do you believe that Second Life can be used with younger students? Absolutely. I'm not in that end of education, but definitely I could see that... Um, you know, if you if you uh, look here at some of the other organizations on Second Life, ISTE or VISTE, um, among others, um, you will see that it is being used in grammar school and in uh, junior high school and high school. Uh, and of course, young kids have a large array here of imagination, so they take to this kind of stuff a lot more easily. We have about uh, four minutes left, so if there are other questions. What do you think is the first step to introduce Second Life to a friend so he will learn about Second Life and not get frustrated? Well, I think, you know, I'm biased about this, but I would go to Whole Brain Health where we have self-guided basic navigation uh, tours, and also where there are mentors who would accompany that person and teach them slowly how to navigate. Without that navigation, uh, they do get frustrated. And I would uh, hate to think of how many people came in and then just jump right out because it was so foreign to them. But uh, at Whole Brain Health, we do have... Um, we do have a setup here which can make it easy for newcomers, including students. And I was very heartened to have the community cultural hub there because uh, it was amidst uh, something that, uh, that I think um, is very uh, newcomer friendly. Um, next, did, do you have the training videos you used for this study online? Yes, uh, that is in this PowerPoint. That was the URLs that I had just uh, mentioned to you, uh, the 31-minute uh, one. And also, I can get you the one, if you'd like, for changing clothes. Uh, that was not listed here. And by the way, uh, after this uh, presentation, and we'll have to close in a minute here, if anybody would like to friend me, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, and I hope that this dialogue can continue. Anything else before we uh, before we say uh, goodbye at this point? And then maybe not goodbye, but at least for the time being, goodbye. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to present today on this course and on the study, and I look forward to further interactions with you. What you want to do now? Okay, I'm going to turn my speaker on because you know I had it on in there a few minutes ago and they asked me to turn it off. Uh. <laughs> I was embarrassed. <laughs> I didn't know it was on. Um, th do you want to go to that networking? It's okay. Um, I'm not the only one who has an open mic, hon. Quad. Quadrivium. Quadrivium. Yeah, we could go.
Okay, let's see. I've got the um. I would change, but it seems like it takes me 